Hi everyone, my name is Michelle and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Reloadly. Every year, migrants and expats living abroad are sending $500 billion back home in money transfer. Now, what if we can offer these existing senders an alternative way to remit value to their families back home? Reloadly is the Western Union for mobile credit transfer. We are an API B2B platform that enables other apps and websites to send credit to 4.5 billion phones around the world. The problem is that this service and this industry is currently very old school and closed off. And none of the current players are addressing this problem to the developers community. There are 20 million developers around the world that can access this service to build innovative and creative products. Reloadly is the only API platform that allows developers a frictionless onboarding process to get up and running without any hesitation. In a matter of a couple of days, developers can add mobile top-ups to their apps and sites and start generating additional revenues with their current customer base. We're addressing a huge market. There's 4.5 billion prepaid mobile phones around the world, and international mobile top-ups is already a $10 billion a year industry. And we believe by ad addressing this problem to the developers and other tech companies, we can grow this business to, to an exponential level. We're well above the competition. Again, we're the only company that's addressing this problem rooted in code to be distributed through developers and other platforms. And we're doing this by building a developer community. We host hackathons and meetups, and hopefully uh, we plan to turn these developers into potential paying customers. And in th three years, we plan to have over 300 accounts. These accounts will be doing on average about 3,000 transactions a month, and we'll be generating over $50 million a year. We've launched since September 10th. We've gained already 120 B2B accounts spanning over 20 countries, and we're already doing over $30,000 in monthly recurring revenues. We have an uh, expert telecom team. Emmanuel PR is our CTO and co-founder, and we've known each other for over 10 years, working in our first startup. We're raising a seed round of $750,000. The funds will be used to hire development teams, sales teams in different regions, and onboard new mobile operators on our API platform. Thank you, thank you. Time's thank up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Judges? Um, how would you be able to apply this? Or how would going to the Claro showcase in Guatemala, how would this benefit you in well, building the business? Yeah, thank you, that's a great question. Um, Claro is a mobile operator in several countries in Latin America and in the Caribbean. So, um, first of all, I'd love to have Claro on board our platform because our goal is to onboard. There's 816 mobile operators around the world, and uh, we plan to onboard almost all of them onto our API platform. Congrats on the attraction. Thank you. Um, can you share one of the most compelling use cases, so a developer that's currently leveraging the API? Sure. We have a company in Brazil that they're a, they're a marketplace, and their target is Africans living in Brazil. And they found us online. We haven't spent any marketing dollars yet. They signed up, they connected to our APIs, and within 24 hours, they were adding, they added this product for the African community living in Brazil. And currently, he's doing about 1,500 uh, euros a week in revenues with us. <clears throat> I want to congratulate you. It was a great presentation, uh, clean. Uh, you felt comfortable on stage. You answered most of the questions, um, you know, problem, solution, the team, your financials. So it was, uh, it was a very well done presentation. Thank you. All right. So um, that's, that's in terms of the funding, how much have you raised so far? Did you guys bootstrap? Yes, definitely. Uh, and what are the terms of the raise? Uh, from family and friends, we raised 120,000, and now we're doing the seed round for 750. And what are the terms? 
the terms are at a $3 million valuation cap. For the what is over the bond note, safe note, equity? What is Safes, it? preferably. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. This is Emiliano Escandon. He's a soccer teacher from Cancun, Mexico, and he has over 200 students. Every month, he needs to collect tuition from them, cash. But it's a difficult thing to do because half of them pays the other half, not so much, and this impales his, his growth. Now, this is Ramon Rodriguez. Ramon is an adventure tour operator in the southern jungle of Mexico. He is obliged by federal regulation to comply giving his clients contracts and insurance to things that are hard to come by in the remote villages where he operates. Neither of them has an e-commerce presence nor sales online. That's why we created Journey, a social platform to organize sport and adventure. We help our clients go online with digital payment, subscriptions, compliance, geolocation, and digital marketing, such as SEO, SEM, and social. On top of that, we provide them a booking platform and a user-generated repu uh, user reputation system to, to grow their business with. Now, our business model is rather simple. We charge a commission fee for every transaction on the platform. For sports, we charge a 7% monthly commission fee and 20% if we get them a new client. For adventure, we charge a variable commission of up to 20% and 5% if they bring their own client. So we've chosen both markets because they are huge. On the first side, this way we don't have to worry about high and low seasons, and it's the same demographic that consumes them. The adventure tourism industry was valued at $440 billion in 2016, and is expected to reach $1.3 trillion by 2023. The sports market, on the other hand, was valued at $620 billion in 2011, and has been growing at a compound rate of 20%. There's enough market for everybody. Now, the team that is developing this is from Cancun. We've been ch childhood friends, and the co-founder co CDO is Marco Hill. He's a computer engineer. He has over seven years of experience, and myself, Oscar Garza. I am a lawyer, I have been a mountaineering guide, and I have represented my country on taekwondo and fencing. On top of that, we are being aided by funds from a crowdfunding campaign, angel investors, and the Mexican government. For the traction, we released our MVP on July this year. We've gained 3,700 visitors monthly, average. We have 1,700 users and over 90 clients. We already began with sales and we haven't even started with our marketing campaign budget. So we're trying to unify and digitize a whole industry. It's a blue market for us in Mexico. And with Claro, we can achieve new markets. We can showcase our scalability and we can help push sports and adventure forward. Thank you. Thank you, judges. Um, you said that, um, that one of the problems was that they, were, they couldn't get insurance, the, the mm -hmm. adventure sports guys. Are you planning to bolt on the sale of insurance? Yeah, totally. As an extra revenue stream? Yeah, so we're working with GMP and AXA, Seguros, and we are helping them provide to sport classes and adventure tour operators insurance. Now, um, these clients can acquire their insurance for specific sports or adventure activities with us, and it's much simpler this way. We gain a 20% commission for the sale of insurance. Perfect, congratulations. Thank you. Um, I, you mentioned before that the tour operators are usually hard to reach. How are you gonna bring them on board? Okay, so we start cold calling them that, that way. I am a mountaineering guide, so I know a lot of tour operators. And after that, we make a referral program. So once they, they can recommend us to their well, to their friends that are actual tour, actually tour operators, and we give them a commission for each transaction that those um, tour operators generate to us for a year. So they gain money by referring more people. Yeah, so uh, just a quick feedback for you. Uh, oh, when you do the presentation, when you talk about market size, uh, your market is not a trillion dollars because you don't do every sports adventure in the world, every traveling and everything in the world you don't, you don't cover. It has to be the service that you provide, being either a technology platform, an insurance platform, or marketplace, whatever it is. So you should only include your specific market. Okay. All right? So just oh, a quick feedback you. for you. I just wanted to commend you. I think we have screen addictions, and I love that you're 
allowing people to get out in the world and actually experience life uh, in, a, in a credible way with people that love their passion. Um, I, I do have a question to piggyback on the last comment, and that is, are you an insurance company? Are you a marketplace? Or are you building out technology for booking and reservations? We're a software as a service company that help bring solutions to our clients. Got it. And just, do we have, are we out? Yeah. We're done. Thanks. Thank you. Oscar Thank Garza, you. Journey. Thank you very much. Hello. Thank, Thank you. you. So now content providers can build the most disruptive media content solutions in the market. So if you're a radio station, a TV station, an influencer, or a newspaper, you can use Strings platform to build the most disruptive experiences. Here are some of our customers, Radio Disney, Carrie Flix, ESPN, that are using our technology to do what? Let me show you a little bit what they're doing. Uh, they're using inside casts to stream their live content directly to social media. They're also using our platform to build their own apps in Roku, Apple TV, iOS, Android. They're also using inside chat so that users are actually watching content and chatting at the same time. This consumes more data, so Claro should be pretty happy with this. And at the same time, it creates more engagement with users, 100% increase in engagement when people can chat and watch content at the same time. Through the platform, you can actually create also inside games, live streaming games with polls, so you can actually know if you're answering the questions correctly, you move to the next round, and you can win cash prices. And, of course, you gotta make money, you gotta monetize. The three things that we do is distribute, engage, and monetize, and we help our customers monetize through Inside Ad, our patent pending technology. As well as customers and end users who want to be able to participate in networks. So we created a new technology called uh, Inside Stories with selfies, where people can take selfies and actually get paid for the creation of the selfies. So a lot of engagement and a lot of future thinking as well, where we bring AR and, and VR inside the content experiences. So you cannot do everything so great without a fantastic analytics platform behind uh, integrated with machine learning. And uh, we're, doing, we're doing extremely well. We're having a record year, record annual recurring uh, revenue, record subscribers, record number of customers this year, patent uh, uh, pending technology. We streamed the Soccer World Cup for three countries. Uh, in the world, and uh, the market opportunity for us, it's uh, over uh, a million, $100 million. Um, the team delivers, and these are the results of the delivery. So Strain is empowering new content experiences. Thank you very much. Thank you. Judges? So the last graph, was that revenue? No, subscribers growth, engagement oh. and subscribers growth. Okay, I thought it was, uh, okay. Revenue so what's your, is still what's your revenue? Yeah, annual recurring revenue over a million. A million dollars? Yeah, yes. Okay, when did you start again? We started, we incorporated in 2014, and then in 2016 we received our first round of funding from Tamiami Angels, and we went full time. We were okay. bootstrapping for a couple of years, and now we went full time. All right, thank you. Um, where did you stream the World Cup, and how much did you pay for the rights? We, well, we streamed it for our customers. So we had three customers that had the rights to the World Cup, and we streamed it for three countries, El Salvador, Dominican Republic, and U.S. Radio. So U.S. Radio was ESPN, Dominican Republic was Antena News, and the third one is uh, TCS Go in El Salvador. Okay. Congrats on the traction. Thank you. Question, what's preventing you from scaling faster? I know you mentioned yesterday that you're working with like radio stations, but... You know, your, your price point, I think. Well, yeah, that's a great question. So scaling for us, we're growing. Uh, month over month, we're growing. And we're raising a, a round of capital right now where we can hire more people, feed on the street. So we're raising $2 million. 1.5 has already been committed. And uh, we are, uh, we're looking for the extra 500. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, man. Hi. Good afternoon. Buenas tardes. Here we go. I'm Etienne Gilard, founder and CEO of Waleteros, the mobile banking for the Americas. 
In the US, the banking system is not adapted at all to the needs of the low-income consumers. The, the banking system requires them to maintain a minimum balance, to pay overdraft fees, pay hidden fees. They cannot cash checks in minutes. They cannot send money to unbanked family members abroad, and they cannot apply for a credit. The money transmitters are quite adapted, but they are time-consuming and expensive. And we solve all those issues. We have no minimum balance, no hidden fees, no overdraft fees. You can cash a check in minutes. You can send money, send cash to Latin America, and you can access to credit. How do we do that? It's very easy. You download the app. You register in three minutes with your social security number or your ID. You take a selfie, and you get right away a virtual card open into your account. And then 10 days later, you receive a physical card. You can load funds with uh, cash, cards, checks, direct deposits, or loans. You can use your card on uh, Google Pay and Android Pay, PayPal at millions of stores, and your physical card, you can use it at any ATMs, and you can send cash at a very low cost to Latin America. In the US, a third of the population is unbanked, and 20 million of them are Hispanics or Latinos. And we are as good as Chime, GoBank, or Varo, which are the newer banks, and we are cheaper than Zoom, Remitly, or Red Remit. So we have the full product. It's a one-stop shop solution for Latinos. We make money thanks to the each time you use the card, uh, we get an interchange commission from Visa. We have a few fees on the card. You, you, when you send money abroad, we get a commission. And we, uh, when you get a loan also, we get a commission from our partners. Our customers are Latinos, mobile first, hard worker, legal resident, and are between 20 and 40 years old. We know how to acquire them with digital marketing campaign mostly, activate them, uh, retargeting uh, and emailing them, and uh, to retain them with uh, some promotions we have for them. We have a great team. Uh, most of them are from uh, Latin America, so we know very well uh, the Latin mindset. And we are live, so you can download the app. We have already opened 28,000 accounts so far, and we are currently raising a 1 million seed round uh, to 2 million pre-money, and uh, we have already secured 600,000, and one of our main investors is Catalina Card Services. They are the owner of Univision, Univision MasterCard program, and uh, they know the business, they know us for the last two years, and they are, are sure that we are going to be a big success and helping millions of people in all of the region to improve their daily life. Thank you very much. Thank you. Judges? How much money have you raised so far? 1.5 million, including the 600K. So 900 in the, in the last. So, but you, you, uh, sorry, um, because you're raising now uh, a one on a three post money. So you're, raising, uh, you're giving one third of your company away now. Yes. How much have you given already away before? Uh, a third or so. So you, you have been very, very diluted. Well, I still have, yeah. To, <laughs> no, it's, okay. it's life. <laughs> no, it's not life. It's entrepreneurship. So. <laughs> exactly. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So for, are you already operating for sending funds abroad? Yes, also yes. We and sent to 15 countries in Latin America, including Cuba and Guatemala, of course. And uh, it's $1 to send up to $1,000. And how do people in those countries take the money away from them? We have an, a network of 50,000 cash pickup location. So those cash pickup locations, are they part of another yes. network? Yes, we partner with Intercambio Express, which is a US MTO, money transfer operator. I love that you're serving the unbanked and or people that want to bypass the bank. Um, I have a question for you regarding your super users. So who, where are you seeing the traction? Like, who are your super users? Who are really making this happen? Well, let, give, let me give you an example. Jose Avila, uh, born in November 90. Uh, he's 28 years old. He's uh, working as a customer of us since uh, for one, more, more than one year. He's getting paid on his wallet or card account. And uh, every two weeks, he sends a uh, a love message to uh, his wife through Waleteros, sending her some money. Uh, we are my, my love, and here's, here's the money for the, uh, for the month. So, and he's a construct, he works in a construction uh, company, so it's exactly... The, uh, and we uh, found him, and he found us, 
<laughs> actually, uh, through influencers on Facebook. So. All right, thank you very much. Etienne Waleteros, thank you. On June 3rd of this year, Volcán de Fuego erupted. It killed more than 150 people. It displaced more than 4,000. Two whole villages were wiped out, out of the map. Me and my cousin are doctors, so we quickly went to one of the shelters where we could help. And when we got there, it was pure chaos. The line to go into the village was two kilometers long. And when we got to the clinic, there was eight doctors in a space that was meant for two. So we quickly realized that we could generate a lot more impact if we organized the help that was already there. So we organized a quick shift schedule, and we managed to maintain medical attention for 24 hours for three whole weeks. Then we realized that the victims needed a lot of psychological attention. So we asked our psychologist friends to help us out. They got on board, and they managed to provide more than 500 hours of psychological attention to the victims. Thanks to social media, word got out that we were helping, and our inbox is quickly filled up of people wanted to help. So we asked the question, how can we leverage uh, volunteers' skills in order to produce more impact? Do you ask your web developer friend to come down to the shelter and help you organize the pharmacy? No. In that situation, you want people to do what they do best. So Omar developed a web platform where volunteers could organize um, their help and uh, use their skills in a catastrophe setting. I don't know if you've ever been near a catastrophe, but their nature is complex and horrifying. People usually see a catastrophe on the news, they pay attention to it, they donate money to it, but once media moves on to the next big thing, they quickly forget about it. But for that one young man who lost up to 40 family members in one afternoon, his support system has completely vanished. He will have an uphill battle for the rest of his life. So how do you turn catastrophes upside down in order to help people? You leverage volunteer skills and you let them do what they do best in that moment where there's great need. Volunca platform enables us to do that. And the beautiful thing about that is that you can give volunteers data gathering tools. So you can analyze the data of what they're doing and see what works and what doesn't work. So you can be better prepared for future catastrophes and prevent loss of, future, uh, loss of life in the future. Our catastrophe, uh, our platform, I think we can replicate it. We are, want to replicate it in different countries that are catastrophe prone. Thank you, Pedro. Sorry to interrupt, but time's up. Thank you. Thank you, Pedro. Judges? Um, can you tell us a bit more about this platform and how it works? Sure. Uh, the platform, uh, we have people on the ground who evaluate the needs assessment about what is needed. In this case, we were doctors, so we got on the scene. We saw that there was a need for medical attention. We upload the events into the platform, and volunteers that have a medical is background it, can join so in. So is it like a Slack for volunteers, or how, how does the platform work? It is like a calendar. So you put up the calendar uh, of the volunteer schedule. It uh, allocates how many people you need with that skill set, and then it kind of counts down depending on how many volunteers participate into it. Love the mission. Feel the heart. Thank I know you. the founder of Charity Water, and his superpower is being a promoter. And you're an, you guys are MDs, so what's, what's your superpower in being able to create a platform? So the medical background gives us entry into a catastrophe setting because it's a very delicate situation. Um, but once you're with the medical background in the catastrophe setting, you notice that medicine is not everything. You, you need psychologists. You need people with background in web development. You need people with background in marketing. You need people. So enabling and having that vision about what the needs are is, I think, one of our key aspects. Now, first of all, congratulations for the cause and uh, you, you know, you're using your superpowers or your knowledge to help people, so that's great. Thank you. Uh, your challenge to, to make that attractive for an investor. Yes. And clearly, we need to work on some, some steps, including the presentation, Thank uh, you. you know, the financials, how we can make money with your business. If you can prove to an investor that we can make money, it becomes a donation. 
Definitely. So one thing is donating money for a cause, the other thing is making investors attractive to your business so you can have a big exit. The only thing investors care about is exit. Sell your company. That's why people invest, otherwise they donate their money. Of course, there's a cause behind, helping. If you're on top of that, if you're helping somebody, it's great. But you have to be able to show to investors that they should invest in you, not on, on the other 10,000 companies that are looking for funding. Thank so you. that's my piece of advice for you and for the, the artists as well. But good, good job. All right. Thank you very much. Pedro from Polunca. Thank you very much. Hi. My name is Kyle Passarelli. I'm CTO for Opticality. And uh, I want you to, to think about the last time you submitted an application for a credit card or a claim with your insurance company. How did you do it? How long did that take? Now, keep, hold that thought. I'd be willing to bet that your exper experience is a little bit like Annie's. Annie applied for a credit card, and even though her application was electronic, it got held up in background document processing. Now, Annie's bank, however, uses opticality, and she not only gets an instant response, she also gets a delightful customer experience. Now, hold on, what happened behind the scenes? The key step is in unlocking document data that is in, doc are, is in documents that are not originally meant to be read by machines, and plugging this data straight into downstream business processes. Now, the key enabling technology is machine learning. And I won't go into the technology right now, but Opticality's mission is to deliver market-leading machine learning-based processes so companies can rock uh, processes like Annie's. We are an ex experienced technical and executive team based in Latin America, and over the last year, we've achieved significant results. Starting from our pre-seed funding round, uh, successful proofs of concept with, com with several large clients, the si signing of our ma first major contract, and now we're in the process of uh, offering seed, rounding, seed round opportunities. A revenue model, is based on a consultative selling approach. We recognize that our clients have different, different needs. And this means that apart from metered usage of our platform and license fees, we offer training and support to ensure customer success. Now, how does it work? Our platform uses a hybrid model of computer vision and robotic process automation which is integrated into an end-to-end -end agent that automates the entire pipeline from beginning document processing through the modeling of complex business rules and delivering at scale and with speed. Thank you very much, Kyle. Okay. Thank you. Judges? I can read this one. <laughs> Can you talk about yourself, who you are? Yeah, I'm Kyle Passarelli. Um, so as a, I was background. CTO of Blue Kite, a company, a financial services company that was bought by Zoom in San Francisco and it's now a division of uh, PayPal. So, mm -hmm. um, how many banks and lenders are you working with already? So our, we have a, a finalized contract with, with one which has us at the break-even point but um, are already in advanced discussions with companies in Miami, Mexico, and Colombia. And how long does it take to integrate with new companies? Say what's yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So um, the technology is, is plug and play as far as, as far as the vision part. Business rules and, and RPA are a little bit more high touch, which is why we are, we uh, work as a, uh, as a consultancy or with, we're exploring working with consultancy companies to handle that variability. But how, lo how long? The, right now, we're looking at four to six months to implement. 
How much capital do you require to scale this company? How okay. many rounds of funding, total capital? Yeah, so pre-seed, we've raised 300,000. And right now, we need twice that to get us fast break even, grow the technology, and, and gain additional traction. Hello, my name is Neri. I'm the founder of Blackbox. Each day, we have new data sources coming all over the place with new softwares and our companies are starting to sell a lot through social media. So all those information needs to be analyzed and analyzed quickly to add value to our companies. So we're having an information problem. We're wasting time doing data crunching and the most important thing we need to improve the conversion rates by personalizing all our marketing campaigns. So we have created Boost Sales. Boost Sales is a platform that will unify all those channels into one and will do the optimization for yourself and for your company automatically. How does this work? The process is very simple. Our clients simply need to put their budget, all their creative ads into the platform and the platform will quickly find the best route for their inversions. Uh, this works because we have the full picture, because we get into your CRM to understand the whole customer journey and to personalize each and one ad set. We're talking about strategic hyper-segmentations, done 24-7, automatically done by the computer. So we want to understand better our customers. Our algorithm can understand what type of intelligence the people have, how do they process information, and this is a great feedback in order to create a more specific campaign and deliver it at the right time at the right person. Also, we can identify the preferred colors that the people are engaging with, mostly because of the KPI of success from the companies. We also have to understand their behaviors. Where are they engaging? Where do they hang out? What type of buying behaviors do the client have? And with this information, we can provide better ad sets at the right moment. But our success with the clients speaks for themselves. In clothing industry, we have allocated 90% in growth in sales. In education, especially in the MBAs and superior education, a 172% increase in revenue. And in luxury real estate, a 65% increase in conversion rate. This is by using our software a few months. We are right now targeting in, uh, over 500,000 uh, companies in Latin America with a total value of 960 million. And uh, this year, we're over 60 clients, and we have an annual revenue of $300,000. We want to quickly expand to 1,000 customers and to have a $6 million revenue. And um, that's Black Box. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Neri. Judges? Can you, sorry. Can you tell us a bit about your existing clients? I think you have 60. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. We have uh, already clients like uh, international universities, like, for example, Universidad Pontificia de Chile. And we are the ones that uh, optimize all their superior programs in all Latin America. We are, here, are working already with Visa in Guatemala to start to optimize their engagement. We have been working as well with energy companies in Latin America and um, some regions of the U.S. as well. I, I, I headed up Axiom's strategy globally and we helped build Facebook's audience matching and advertising platform. Analytics wasn't the challenge, it was companies not having access to data. So I'm really curious what data sets you're leveraging to fuel these campaigns. Yeah, um, basically this algorithm, what it does is it does a constant and really uh, big iteration system. So we do like, uh, suppose in one campaign we can do up to 10,000 A-B testing simultaneously. So yeah, we're, we're working right now with Facebook, LinkedIn and Google Ads. So that's the platforms that we are integrating and we are leveraging by doing integrations, iteration after iterations to understand the best route. Congratulations, it was a fantastic presentation. Yeah, it's very hard for entrepreneurs to come here in the stage and present in three minutes. So we, we're aware of how hard it is to come and pitch to investors. Uh, so you've done a great job on your visuals, your message, your communication, your body language. It was a great presentation, congratulations. Thank you. Hi everybody. My name is Matt Ohashi. I'm presenting Weishing.com. What we are is we're the first events crowdfunding platform in the United States. Um, we are a Title C crowdfunding platform. Our goal is to directly connect investors and fans to the event producers, concert tour promoters. 
So fans already value experiences, promoters and organizers are already need partners. Uh, people invest sizable amounts of money into events to attend as VIPs or as regular attendees this time. Our goal is to, connect, is to give the fans an opportunity to become more than just attendees. So uh, as you can see here, yeah, these are some of the benefits. So in addition to allowing fans to actually make profits on shows, which is something that hasn't been done before, they get exclusive benefits like meeting the artists, uh, special access, and several other perks to uh, becoming part of the platform. So this is one of our, uh, our hits. This is an event that we raised, uh, it was in Mexico with Lenny Kravitz. Uh, the goal was to raise uh, six million pesos and we were able to raise that uh, almost $200,000. The return on that particular event, it was, is uh, 16%. Um, so basically how it works is the promoters reach out to us, they present to us a profit and loss on the show, we analyze it, and then we suggest uh, the, the, the model to which we're going to present to the, the fans. So there's a couple different models. There's a fixed return model where they can get anywhere from 1% to 2% off of their investment per month. And then we also have a variable risk model where they can actually potentially lose, but they could also gain a much higher profit. Um, so yeah, as far as how we earn money, the investors pay a, a percentage of the funds raised, and then the promoters also pay a percentage of the funds raised. Uh, there's actually a, a, a typo there. It's not 35%, it's 3.5%, just to clarify that. So these are uh, some of the shows that we've been, oh, this is not, yeah, this is not correct, okay. It's not, it's not showing correctly, but uh, anyways, this is actually a graph of the shows that we've raised capital for. Uh, shows ranging from Morrissey to Alan Parsons Project, Megadeth. Uh, right now we're working on Primus. Uh, we've raised funds for over 200 shows across the Americas. Uh, prim our primary markets right now are Chile, Argentina, and uh, Mexico. And we just launched USA just a few months ago. So yeah, it's, it's not showing correctly. But uh, in total, we've raised over $12 million for shows across the Americas. Ah, there you go. So yeah, you guys can see there some of the shows that we worked with: Chris Cornell, uh, Hanson. Thank you, Matt. Hansen thank you. Time's up. Oh, okay. Sorry, guys. Mike. Matt from Wishing. Thank you very much, Matt. Judges. Uh, quick question. So, for these shows, does it include revenues not just from ticket sales, but also merchandise, barbell? No, it's solely from from ticket revenues. Are you open to include? Because most of the money gets made in in those other channels. Uh, well, it has to do it with the. Uh, regulations. There's limitations to how we can return funds back to the investors or the fans. So that's why we specify it's for, for the tickets. Yeah. So are you targeting only mostly the entertainment or are you looking to all sorts of events? This is a entertainment industry crowdfunding platform exactly. So um, I didn't get to that part but ticket revenues is a seven billion dollar industry in the United States. Uh, it's the biggest market in the world. So, um, yeah, it's specifically geared towards event producers, concert tour promoters, and it enables fans to not just be fans of, of events, but to become investors in events as well. So, mine is just a quick feedback. Um, you know, when you have this fashion show and the model walks in the stage and she falls, mm -hmm. you wake, you get up, and you continue to walk and you smile. So, when you do your presentation, I had no clue that was wrong until you told me. So run your show as everything was brilliant and fantastic and you just will do just fine. So just a quick feedback for you. Because you have results, you have numbers and nothing beats numbers. Yeah. But you know, by putting yourself down, that affects your presentation. So just quick feedback. Okay. I, I, I love the model of crowdfunding concerts and people participating in the experience. I've, I've done a lot of work with the founder of StubHub and they're trying to own more of the experience because they can't be profitable just being a buying and selling marketplace. And so I see this being a great pickup for a company like that or somewhere else. But yeah, I, was, I would encourage yeah, you I was to get there. Live yeah. Nation and like AEG Live is a, is a target for us for like a vertical integration. Um, and yeah, so cool. thanks. So you're, thank you you're open up to that. You're open. Well, to eventually, that. yeah, that's where we're aiming towards. Cool. Uh, that's that's our, our, our end game. Yeah. Thank you. We at Bid Finance <laughs> believe that everyone should have access to the investments that build wealth. Investments that today are available only to the wealthy. We're gonna level the playing field. I'm Eli Blatt, founder and CEO of Bit Finance. I'm a behavioral scientist, serial entrepreneur, and I come from a family with a long history in banking. 
My great-great-grandfather co-founded the first commercial bank in the Southern Caribbean over 100 years ago. Today, it remains the largest bank in the Netherlands Antilles. Growing up in this family and at regularly attending annual shareholders meetings gave me unique insight into how financial privilege begets financial access. This insight was reinforced when I began investing and I realized that not just my friends, but in fact fewer than 5% of investors worldwide have access to the powerful class of investments known as alternatives. Things like private equity, hedge funds, secured debt, by virtue of not being accredited investors or not being able to meet the high mandatory minimum for participation in these types of funds. Despite this limited participation, alternatives are a $15 trillion worldwide market. So now, a century after my great-great-grandfather brought access to banking services to an island that had none, our mission at BitFinance is to bring access to alternatives to the 95% of investors worldwide who are currently precluded from participation. I've assembled an all-star team to do this. My President and Chief Investment Officer Michael Kahn was formerly COO for Alternative Asset Management for Alliance Bernstein, a half trillion dollar asset manager, one of the largest in the world. But we're not a traditional asset management company. We're building a mass market robo investment platform and we have the innovator of that category on our team, Eli Braverman, co-founder of FinTech Unicorn Betterment, the first robo advisor. What Betterment did for stocks and bonds, Bitfinance will do for alternatives. And together, we've built this. You're seeing a live demo of our robo-investment platform that you can demo right now at our website, bitfinance.com. This platform makes it easy for investors of all classes to build diversified portfolios of institutional-grade alternative assets literally in minutes. On the Back end, we're building a deep tech stack platform that provides better, faster, cheaper, more scalable, transparent, and secure fund administration than current architectures allow. We're not only using this to administer our own products, but by popular demand from fund managers, we're beginning beta testing later this year, offering this as a SaaS solution to third-party funds. This gives us multiple revenue stream. Traditional fees for assets under management, like those charged by Betterment and other RIAs and investment companies, as well as B2B SaaS fees. And considering alternatives are already a $15 trillion market with only 5% worldwide participation, I can't overstate this. I believe our combination of team, platform, protocol, and products makes big finance a unicorn opportunity. Thank you, and please join us as we democratize finance. Thank you, Eli. All right. Judges? Great presentation. Thank you. You clearly practice to be on time, so well done. It's my are third you... pitch in three weeks. So. Oh, it's good. <laughs> so are you, uh, I saw white paper. Do I see ICO on this? Um, so we are actually not doing an ICO. We, well, will, we, job, will, we will have a security token offering down the road uh, as part of our ability to provide liquidity uh, because we're not a broker or reseller because alternatives are illiquid. Uh, so we're actually using blockchain technology both uh, to enable liquidity um, and as part of our back end, which uses smart contracts. Which technology? Ethereum or Hyperledger? Bitcoin so our, MV our MVP is being built on Ethereum ERC-20. Uh, and we're, we have two patents pending for smart tokens as well as an asynchronous hybrid ledger that preserves the best features of cloud-based uh, uh, ledgers, which are transparency, which are flexibility and speed, and blockchain-based ledgers, which offer transparency and immutability. How do you deal with the, the gas cost of the transaction at Ethereum platform? So that's actually one of the things that uh, our patent specifically solves by writing asynchronously from the cloud to the blockchain, we're able to control f uh, for the cost of gas because we can write transactions together in blocks uh, and thus lower the costs. And, and as we go into the future, uh, there are other uh, blockchains that do not have the same gas cost issues. Uh, so now we are all going to announce a winner. Yeah, there's five. So um, my winner is Waleteros. All right, Waleteros, you want a trip to Guatemala? Let's go. Good job, that was a great jump. Here you go, sir. Congratulations. All right, the second winner is Uber. <laughs> Facebook, no. Black Box Solutions.
Our third winner is Stream Media. Geo is with a customer. <laughs> and the fourth winner is Reloadly. <laughs> Woohoo! I want to acknowledge that every single founder and co-founder is a winner because they're doing their dreams. And for this competition, we have a fifth and final winner. I'd like to congratulate Eli Blatt and Bid Finance. Hey, so we can, can we give it up for everybody that participated in the startup competition? Can we also recognize Unbound for putting on this conference? And can we acknowledge Claro, who's going to be flying all of these founders to Guatemala, putting them up in a hotel, all-inclusive trip, food paid for. As a founder, you don't get flown, fed, and put up properly. It's usually coming out of your pocket or an investor's pocket. So enjoy the $1,000 cash. Put it to good use. Enjoy Guatemala, and thank you guys very much for being a part of the competition. And thank you to the judges. Yep. Yep.